everyone, welcome back to Risa Does Makeup. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five game-changing makeup tips that I learned from other makeup artists. I started my makeup career in 1996. So even though I've been doing makeup for a very long time, I never ever think that I know everything. I never want to stop learning. I never want to stop observing. No one should ever, no matter what profession or profession they are in, no one should ever feel like they have reached the top and that there's nothing more to learn and there's nothing more, there's no new tips or techniques out there. I like to watch other makeup artists. I know tutorials aren't very popular on, on YouTube anymore, unfortunately. But I personally really enjoy watching them. I really enjoy seeing how other artists and even just, you know, YouTube creators that aren't professional makeup artists, I really like to see how they put looks together and the techniques that they're using. Are they doing any, anything different that I've never tried before? And what I'm going to be sharing with you today are five tips that when I saw them, I had sort of an aha moment or a, wow, I never thought of doing that. I'm gonna give that a try. So I thought, why not put all five together in a video for you? And here they are, let's get started. So my first tip is one I learned a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago now, from Nikia Joy. And if the makeup artist I mentioned does have a YouTube channel, I will of course link that in the description box below. So Nikia Joy has oily skin like I do. We don't always agree on the products we love and don't love. There are some foundations for oily skin that she adores that I don't and vice versa. But one of the videos she did was about how to keep foundation on your nose. And that is my biggest problem area as well. I have extremely large pores on my nose and I have extremely oily skin. It's getting a little bit less oily as I, as I get older, but I still definitely get a lot of oily breakthrough on my T-zone. So even long wearing foundations do have a tendency to disappear in this area. And God knows I have tried so many products, prob probably every product on the market to help reduce the look of the pore size on my nose. So what she recommended in that video was something that I had never ever thought to do. She recommended using the MAC Paint Pot. I believe she might have used Painterly, but I currently only own Soft Ochre. And what she did is she applied the paint pot to her nose. A lot of people use paint pots as their eyeshadow primer, but I never in a million years would think to apply it to my nose. So what I do is I take a little bit on my finger and I rub it across my nose but then I also will work it in to the areas that I have really, really large pores and they disappear like magic. I have never had any problems with this product breaking me out on my nose, causing pimples. It just makes the makeup stay on your nose a lot better. Now the next tip is from an incredibly talented makeup artist I only recently discovered. I believe I found him on Instagram first and then I realized he had a YouTube channel. His name is Hindosh and he is a professional makeup artist in the Middle East. The makeup looks he creates are so incredibly stunning. And the great tip that I got from him was to use your foundation brush to blend out your contour. And I'm not talking about a clean foundation brush. I'm talking about using the foundation brush that you used to apply your foundation. Now, sometimes I will use a beauty blender. I go back and forth, you know, depending on the foundation, sometimes I'll use a beauty blender for the best application. Sometimes I'll use a brush, but lately I've been really loving using a brush. And in the demonstration here, I am using the Morphe M439 brush. And it's about a one and a half inch in diameter dense brush. So I buff my foundation in with that, and then I take that same brush that already has some of my foundation still in it. I will then use that to blend out my contour. And what that does is it seamlessly blends together your contour with your base makeup, with your foundation. Instead of having these harsh lines, you get this really diffused, much more natural looking contour. 
One of the biggest struggles people have with contouring is getting it to look natural and learning how to properly blend it out, which those two things kind of go hand in hand. If you don't blend out your contour properly, it isn't going to look natural. And ever since I started doing this technique, contouring my face has been so much more effortless and once again, natural looking. For this next tip, we are going all the way back to 1996 when I started in makeup with Laura Mercier. A lot of today's makeup lovers that are much younger than myself, they know the brand name Laura Mercier, but they don't quite know just how popular Laura was back in the mid late 90s. For those of you that don't know, Laura Mercier is a makeup artist from France and in the mid 90s, she was the makeup artist for Madonna. She did almost every single Vogue magazine cover. She was one of the top makeup artists in the industry, along with Bobby Brown and Kevin O'Quan. And she launched her makeup collection in 1996. And that is when I began to work for the brand when it was just in its beginning stages. The secret camouflage, the powder, the foundation, those were the core products. Laura was all about perfecting the skin. She always recommended a primer, and yes, she's had those from the beginning as well. Then we would go in with the Secret Camouflage, which is a product that has two different shades that you can custom blend or you can use for different parts of the face, and a little brush and apply that to any areas of the face that needed extra coverage, and then a light layer foundation was applied. And then on top of that came her Cult Classic Loose Powder. And we were told that if we sold a loose powder, we had to do our best to sell the client a puff as well. And this is still one of the best techniques I have ever learned and I use it every time I have an important event or if I really want to want my makeup to look its absolute best. You take this powder puff, you fold it in half like a taco, like a taco shell. You press it into a good amount of powder and then you push the powder into the face. And I know a lot of you that have more mature skin right now are thinking, oh, heck no, I am not going to be pushing powder into my fine lines or big lines, you know, depending on your age and your skin condition. And then others might be thinking, well, isn't that just like baking, the technique of baking with powder? And no, it's not. With the baking technique, a lot of powder is applied with a brush or sponge underneath the eye or along the contour line. It sits for a little bit and then it's dusted off. With this method, you are just working the product into the face and you are giving it a beautiful airbrushed look, completely poreless. Your makeup is going to stay on longer than you've ever known it to stay on. Powder puffs are so underrated. I almost never see them appear in makeup tutorials ever. And I personally think that every woman or man should have one in their makeup stash. And to circle back to the issue of having, you know, fine lines and worrying about it, emphasizing those, it's all gonna depend on the powder that you use. There are some wonderful powders on the market for mature skins. I've talked about them in a lot of my videos. Finding the perfect powder for this technique is sort of trial and error. The main thing is to use the puff and really work the powder in with a rolling motion. Now my next tip is from a makeup artist that I follow on Instagram, the incredible Nikki Makeup. She is so talented and she does both natural looks and dramatic looks and editorial type looks and I cannot get enough of her work. She often does Sunday tutorials where she will take you through step-by-step step her entire method. And this next technique is one that I saw during one of those Sunday tutorials. She happened to be working on a model with hooded eyes, very similar to mine, and she did something that I had honestly never seen before. And I actually put this technique in my most recent how to do eye makeup on hooded eyes tutorial. So what Nikki does and what I demonstrated in that video and what I'm demonstrating here is she takes a creamy eye pencil and actually sketches where she wants the shadows to go, wh what the shape of the eyeshadow look is going to be. So she takes that pencil 
And as you can see, I'm, I'm what I'm doing in the video is I am looking straight ahead and putting it right where, if I had a deeper crease, where that crease would be. Then what I do is I take a tiny little blender brush and don't worry if this is messy. This does involve quite a bit of blending, but trust me, it's worth it. I'm using here a Stila Brush 28 to start the blending process, but then I go in with a bigger brush to really blow out that crease. And as you can see, it looks like I've applied eyeshadow, but it's only the pencil. It's going to be super long wearing. You don't have to use as dark of a color as I've chosen here. You can use a soft gray. You can use you know, a lighter brown. You can use a black if you wanna do a really smoky, intense nighttime look. Once you've mastered this technique, and it won't take long for you to master it, you will find doing your eye makeup so much easier. And then my final tip is one that I learned from the fantastic Nikki tutorials. And my favorite tip that I've learned from Nikki is once you've done your eye makeup, you know, some people start with their underbrow highlight first, and I sometimes do that myself. So if that's your go-to method of applying your eye makeup, you can continue to do that and still use this tip, which is once you've completed your eye look, in this video, I have not completed my eye look, but this was just for demonstration purposes. You can kind of see that one eye is slightly higher. I blended slightly higher on one eye than I did on the other. And that happens, you know, a lot of us have uneven eyes and sometimes it does take quite a bit of stepping away and then looking again and seeing if it really is even or not. And I've recommended in past videos, taking a selfie and then zooming in and seeing if things are even. And if they're not, you can take a flat shader brush and an ivory eyeshadow or whatever shade, I wouldn't recommend using a stark white, but a flesh tone, whatever that is for your particular skin tone or an ivory shade and going under the brow and then also using that brush to even out the blend in the crease or your transition shade to get that to be even. And then I also like to take the eyeshadow and come around on the sides to make that look more seamless, to make sure you don't have any harsh edges. And I know some people will do that with just a clean makeup brush or maybe even a loose powder, but I find using an eyeshadow to work so much better, to really make it look like a seamless professional blend. All right, those are the five game-changing tips that I learned from other makeup artists. Well, at least they were game-changing for me. I was so excited to put them all into practice, even though one of them I put into practice 20-some years ago. But I just thought this was a great way to put them all together for you in one place. That'll do it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be the first to know when I upload new videos, which is at least twice a week. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. My username is the same as it is right here. It's Risa Does Makeup, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Bye.